Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a great Monday. We have another show full of hot topics. Nayer is out, but we got uh, Lania and Chike as always. So I want to remind you all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our official website, thestephennightshow.com. Or if you'd rather watch, just go to our YouTube channel, The Stephen Knight Show. Now, um, you know, here in Georgia for the Senate um, election, we were doing, they had to do a runoff because here in Georgia, if, if a person doesn't get over 50%, then it's, it's automatic runoff. So that is December 6th uh, with early voting beginning on November 28th. So make sure that you vote. You know, historically, we don't always go out and vote second time, but we really need to. It's very important. So make sure that you find out your voting information and, and see at the polls. So, Stephen, can I ask you a question about that? Because I, I've been curious about Georgia. You know, the whole world is looking at Georgia right now. Yeah, exactly. What's the temperature there? What are people saying? What, what's going on on the streets? What are they saying? Not much. You know, I think after um, the Trump days, a lot of people mm -hmm. are very quiet about politics because it was so divisive here. Um, and so people really don't say much about it. As a matter of fact, at my job, you know, they send all the managers and above an email, um, just kind of each week of what to update your team on, like stuff, you know, for the company wide. And one of them was being mindful around um, political conversations. That was one of the oh. things that was to our team. So, yeah, so you don't really hear people talking about it a lot, you know, online okay. you do, Twitter, okay. you do. <laughs> but not like just everyday yeah. people. Mm -hmm. All right, well, our question of the day is, if someone says tells you you look good for your age, is that considered a compliment? Lanier. I feel like I want to say yes, but I think it all depends on who it's coming from, though, too. Right. Like, if the tone and the diction in which it's been said, <laughs> um, I generally take it as a compliment because once I, you know, once I tell somebody one how old my son is going to be, right, and then it's like what? And uh -huh. it's like, who do you like? What you don't look like? So yeah. you know, I take it as a compliment. Now you say some other slick shit, then we might have a problem. Right, exactly. What about you, GK? All the time, all the time, every day. And I, I take it as a compliment. I mean, how else am I going to take it? Mm -hmm. I'm, am I going to get offended? Yeah, yeah. I um I get told that often too because people think I'm a lot younger than I am. But mm -hmm. um, especially people that I that I work with, I work with a lot of people in their twenties, like you know, mid to late twenties and thirties, and so they always shop, you know, when they find out I'm not. <laughs> and so, um, but. The reason why I thought about this question because they had this um, this segment over the weekend on CBS Sundays, and they were talking about ageism, and they were saying that like this woman, she actually started her business when she was fifty. Now she's sixty four, and she does all this stuff for the government um, based on her work. And so she says, when people say you are good for age, she said, and you are good for your age as well. <laughs> like she said, there's what does that what does that even mean? But I take it as a comment. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I mean? I would take it as a comment. It would be insulting if one did not know your age and they said that, you know. Right. Well, yeah. well listen, real quick. I, I watch Sherry Shepherds in the show. Sherry, she is hilarious. I didn't ever realize how funny she is, but she was saying that she was out to eat at a bar by herself. And this woman, she was at a bar by herself and she was telling her it's my birthday. So Sherry said that she bought her a drink. And then she starts, she said, turn around and say, hey, now guess how old I am? And she everything. okay, I don't want to answer this. And so um, she said, she said she didn't want to go too low because she the woman knew she was lying. So she said something like 45, 46. She said, well, I'm 58. And Jerry said, I was thinking, that sounds right. <laughs> and she, she was thinking, <laughs> and, she, and she said, you should never ask someone to guess your age. Guess your age. She said, I think we both at the bar drank by ourselves. We both in our 50s. She said, oh but, my God. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I thought that was funny. All right. Well, let's get to the hot topics. Oh, well, tweet us at home. Let us know. Would you consider a compliment if someone said you look good for your age? Stephen Knight Show SHM. All right. So the anti-defamation uh, league on Sunday sharply criticized comedian Dave Chappelle. You know, he hosted um SNL over the weekend, 
Um, the organization accused Chappelle, SNL, and NBC of normalizing and pop popularizing anti-citizenism, um, although they didn't specifically mention anything that he said on the show. But they, the statement said, this is from the president, our CEO, excuse me, we shouldn't expect Dave Chappelle to serve as society's moral compass, but disturbing to see NBC and SNL not just normalize, but popularize anti-citizenism. Why does our tra trauma trigger applause? Now, uh, Chappelle's appearance it was controversial from the start as soon as they announced it because of um, what people consider to be homo uh, transphobic uh, uh, jokes on his Netflix show, The Closer. And there were rumors that writers um, on SNL reportedly consider boycotting the program. Now, Chappelle didn't, he didn't mention anything about the trans jokes controversy um, during his monologue, it was 15 minutes long. He did address a tweet last month by Kanye West, as we know as Jay, Ye, uh, Ye, excuse me, threatening to go DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. Most maddening, he said, was that Ye tweeted the comment and then went to bed. And he said that he was up all night worried what he's gonna do to the Jews. Now, um, the comedian denied critics that he claims that Ye, Ye is crazy. Um, he said, but I think he's possibly not well. Chappelle appeared um, in one quip to shoot down anti-Semitic cons conspiracy theory, excuse me, that Jews run the world, while also underscoring black powerlessness in their communities. He, point, he pointedly noted that there are a lot of Jews in Hollywood adding like a lot, but uh, that doesn't mean anything. He said also a lot of black people in Ferguson, Missouri, where an unarmed black teenager, Michael Brown, was shot dead by a police officer, doesn't mean we run the place. In addition, he did uh, refer to Herschel Walker as observably stupid. <laughs> I was talking about the midterm elections. Um, now, Chappelle hadn't responded to ADL's criticism. So I'll start with you, Chicken. Did you watch, have you seen his monologue? And what do you think? Because there was a lot of controversy um, supporting it. And I will say this, that there was a comedian on CNN today and she said that she loves Dave Chappelle. She's also a Jewish woman. And she said that um, she said that she laughed a lot throughout his monologue, but there were some parts that made her uncomfortable. But she says as comedians, um, which they shouldn't be silenced. But she said that she thought, you know, she kept saying, I thought it was funny. I love him. Um, but it were some things that made me um, towards the end uh, made me a little uncomfortable. So what, what are your thoughts on uh, this monologue? In Me personally, I did not see anything wrong with it. I just, I didn't. Um, I think that he addressed some issues and he played, he teased with the notion of, and he joked with the notion of, but I don't think that he directly said anything offensive. He mainly kept it on uh, Kanye and how ironic things are. He didn't mm -hmm. state any facts. He stated how things look, the coincidence mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I didn't think that he went wrong. But well, I will say this. I know in the program, he used the N-word a lot. And I'm, I'm surprised they let him get away with that. Mm. Mm. Wow. What are your thoughts, Lanier? So, um. Dave Chappelle is very skillful. He's very masterful and brilliant in what he does um, when he has that microphone in his hand. Mm -hmm. He has a way of tying things together that you have no choice but to use reasoning and logic. Anything else, you are being completely ignorant um, and the fact that fingers were already on the pulse mm -hmm. with him. Um, I don't like people, you know, this, this cry to action every time and using certain gaslighting words like trauma, um, because, and going back to the use of the N word, it's okay. And that's been traumatizing for us for years. That's fine. You ain't say nothing about that. 
nobody comes to the the aid or defense of and standing up for us when when things happen out in in the universe no one absolutely no one Mm -hmm. but people start crying they were sitting at home waiting to start just to complain about something and he was right it's the perception and based off of what he said and how he played last on on saturday he was right because because as soon as that was done they were on it Ah, it's you tell me one thing that he said one thing that he said i want to know verbatim what he said Mm -hmm. that you felt no no no, because this is all about what you feel and your entitlement and your privilege period that's all that this is about it's not about anything else he did a great job and (laughs) And I'm just going to say, oh, thank you so much, Mr. Chappelle. I enjoyed seeing so many characters I haven't seen in so long, mm-hmm. um, bringing those characters to the SNL platform because half of them people didn't know about those characters. So thank you. Um, and for the for the writers who contemplating not you know, being a part of boy, boy, it's amazing how people love the word boycotted, but when we did it, it was a problem. But anyway, that's another story. Um, I guarantee you, uh, what is his name? Lauren Michaels had a good old conversation with y'all. And I see ain't nobody do no boycott. Right. Because mm-hmm. there wasn't I think that what was more controversial and no one is talking about it or even probably paid attention to it, but it was Black Star's performance. They didn't get up into that. And he, Black Star, of all people, how long, he, first of all, most death, I know he goes by another name, but I'm still always going to say most death. I see. We talk, like we talk about somebody who left this United States of America. He ain't want to deal with this. Like Talib Kweli, they've all like he has a cool group of people, and they're like this. If black people don't learn how to stick together like that, we're never gonna have nothing. And they stick together. It ain't no well, oh, you in trouble. But it was funny when he said, you know, I, I used to be, you know, I hit him up and talk to him, but this time I said. Mm-hmm. Let me see what happens. That was funny to me. Yeah, yeah. I I had nothing enough that was that was uncomfortable or, or or like untoward in any kind of way. I just hear a bunch of certain people that feel like they have privilege and entitlement wanting to complain about something. Yeah, it was uh, interesting that the ADL CEO he didn't give example of what he said because he couldn't what Dave said that was offensive. Yeah, because I think you can't teach if you don't give examples. You know what I mean? And so yeah. But but I think Dave Chappelle knew what to expect. And I thought I watched the whole monologue and I thought um I didn't see anything wrong with it. I'm not Jewish, but I didn't see anything wrong with what he said. So but. all right. Well Classes were canceled today after three people were shot and killed and another two injured at the University of Virginia, where a gunman suspected to be a former uh, football player for the school opened fire late Sunday evening. Authorities are, uh, well, they actually captured him. Um, His name is Christopher Darnell Jones Jr. He was arrested and he's in custody. I think he's been charged with um, two counts of, um, of second degree murder they think will be upgraded and also uh, um, shooting a gun in a, you know, in a felony type situation. I was just on CNN. But this is, this is the interesting thing about this guy. He's 5'9", 195 pounds. He, he um, is from Petersburg, Virginia. I went to school in Petersburg, Virginia State University. Um, he played linebacker and running back for Petersburg High School uh, for his senior year. In high school, he was a two-time Student of the Year award winner and earned an honorable, honorable mention 
all conference as freshman and second team accolades in his sophomore and junior years. Um, he was a member of the National Honor Society, National Technical uh, Honor Program, president of the Key Club, president of the Jobs for Virginia grads program. Um, the university president said that they were devastated by the shootings, um, you know, and the families had to deal with that. But um, so apparently um, he he just did this, he shot the, uh, this on the bus at 10.30 p.m. La uh, last night. Um, he was, he is a student at UVA and he was on the football team when he was a, a freshman back in 2018. Um, the three gentlemen were murdered. Um, they were all the same age. They all were football players and um, school is actually to be shut down again tomorrow just so they could all mourn the loss. Um, now, CNN said that they spoke to his father and his father mentioned that he had, had been bullied at school. But also um, recently, um, they went to the campus police because they thought he had a gun, but they never found a gun on him. So they didn't make any charges. You know, what do you have to say, Lania, for another school shooting? You know, three innocent lives uh, killed. One, he's in critical condition. The other one is stable. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I saw the post starting to come up, but I had to disconnect. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have all the details, but I, I don't, I don't know. You know, we know that there needs to be some form of gun law control mm -hmm. we know why they don't want to because you know the nra is top donors mm -hmm. of a lot of political um political uh pundits so i don't know i my prayers to you know everyone involved because i i got nothing yeah yeah she get what your thoughts on this I mean, it's sad and it's unfortunate, but nothing is going to change until we do something about gun laws and, and, and the fact that anyone is getting a gun these days. I mean, they got states where, which is Texas, anyone can carry. Mm -hmm. Tell a high water, anyone can carry. That's Georgia. crazy. Mm -hmm. Georgia too? Yeah, but uh, governor, so you don't have to have a license care. That's crazy. So I just walk out the, the doors of the mental hospital and I just go by get a gun. And I'm right. good. Yep. All you need is your ID. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. That needs to change. That's the only way that it's going to change. I mean, and, 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 and You know how quick it is for someone to do something in a fit of rage and you're yeah. carrying around a gun and you're not mentally stable. You're not mm -hmm. well. Yeah. You're quick tempered. Yeah. People don't fight anymore. People don't don't do that anymore. They shoot, they kill. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a sad situation, especially when you see those you know, the faces of the young men that were murdered. You know what I mean? It's just like these they had their whole lives ahead of them. You know what I mean? Ugh. All right. Well, as they say, the numbers don't lie. According to Global, $330 million that the Black Panther Wakanda Forever pulled in over the weekend. The film is a sequel to the understood, the apparently understood the assignment. Now, according to Disney, the film earned $180 million of its global sales from support here in, U in uh, North America, according to CNN. The opening was the highest grossing debut in November ever, which means Wakanda Forever snatched the slot that Hunger Games Catching the Fire secured in 2013 with their 158 million debut. Wakanda Forever is the only a few million below the 202 million debut weekend of its 2018 first installment. Now, the box office win comes after Marvel's uh, story faced significant challenges in the return of the big screen. Fans worried how the creative team would handle uh, the storytelling of Chadwick Boseman, who played King T'Challa, 
And the Black Panther in 2018 film passed away in 2020 from colon cancer. And he was only 43. Um, now, Kyle Feig, head of Marvel Studios, told Empire Magazine in September that the director and co-writer, Ryan Coogler, poured the reality of Chadwick's passing into the world of Wakanda. Um, in the sequel, Wakanda, the Wakandans are processing the loss of King Achala, whose death is a tribute to an unspecified illness. Uh, and serves almost as a tribute to the late actor. Co-star Lupita, uh, she spoke about filming Wakanda Forever about Bozeman. She said, for all of us as a cast, having lost our king, Chadwick Bozeman, that was a lot to process. And in many ways, we're still processing. When you love someone, I don't know when you stop missing them. And of course, we felt it so much making this film without him. Lupita told a Hollywood reporter in July. She added, it was very therapeutic, um, it restored a sense of hope for her in making it. And she said, I think we've expanded the world of Wakanda in a way that will blow people's minds, not just Wakanda, but Black Panther world. And then social media had a lot to say. They love the fact um, they taught Angela Bassett gave the performance of, you know, of the year. Um, and they just, they love, I saw people excited how these black women were lead characters on a motion picture. And then they brought in um, um, indigenous uh, people and they're on the main screen and um, major characters. And so they love that diversity and how um, Black Panther had opened up for uh, different races in this uh, sequel. I'll start with you, Chica. I know you're gonna talk about this in movie reviews, but- uh, Not actually, cause I didn't see it yet. <laughs> you didn't see it yet? Okay. I did not see it yet. Okay. Well, okay. Well, what do you think about the fact? Because you know, what kind of forever? Well, Black Panther was huge in 2018. Yeah. The is sequel, and it's up there doing you know close to the numbers. The first one hit um, and breaking records already on this first weekend. What do you think about that? I think that is awesome, um, and it and it and it smashes those stereotypes of. People don't go to the box office to see people with melanin. Yeah. False. Mm -hmm. But what I really love about this film is that there are two um, different groups of people with melanin in this yeah. film. Yeah. And that's something that's unheard of. No one's done that before. Yeah. But, I, but I have to also say this before it has anything to do with anything of color. And the people that have been comic book heads for years get it. We're not in it. We don't care about nobody with color. Yeah, I happen to be black, and it's wonderful to see people with color on the screen. Yeah, it's awesome. We're in it for the story of Marvel. We are geeks to the comics. You could be green, blue, orange, or yellow. You see how how much uh, Avatar? They're blue. Mm -hmm. We yeah. don't care. We want good entertainment. I don't care mm -hmm. who's on the screen. Just yeah. give me something good. And that's yeah. where it should be. I think that people should put those stereotypes and those, uh, I, I, I was gonna say something, but I wanna behave. I, I just think that Hollywood needs to take a breath and regroup and just make great stories. It doesn't matter who's in them. Make great stories. We're mm -hmm. all human, we all have experiences. We all go through some of the same experiences, no matter what your color is. Mm -hmm. Just make good movies. That's all. Yeah. I went to go see it yesterday, and I loved that when I looked into the audience, it was a diverse crowd. You know what I mean? Um, I, I love seeing that. Linnea, uh, did you watch, and what are your thoughts on the success of this of this um, follow-up? Uh, my honey's taking me to see it this weekend. We're, okay. we're seeing it on Saturday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this because she's crazy. Uh, my homegirl Tiffany uh, did go see it. Um, she said she loved it, but she fell in love with the antagonist of the movie. <laughs> she was like, he's sexy? So, <laughs> um, I, of course, I am a, you know, I am a fan of Wakanda. I am a fan of, you know, this particular franchise and the fact that you have so many black women on the screen, all different hues, just just as beautiful as they want to be, mm -hmm. strong, 
and fierce and vulnerable um, for me, just like the woman king was, you know, it's just something, it does something for me yeah. as a black woman, especially as a black woman doing this acting thing. Yeah. Um, it does something for my spirit. It, does, it, it fills my soul to see that um, on the big screen um, and the false narratives that people love to create around things, especially when it concerns us, um, we come out and we show out when we mm. come out, mm. when we do. And if people, and if our people understood the power that we have, oh my God, we would be so amazing. Like, and, and that's, that's where fear comes from with a lot of people. If we understood our own power, we we are i think we spend one like uh, like one point billion trillion dollars on other people's stuff mm -hmm. you know what i mean and, and none of that comes back into our communities so i i can't wait to see it if i had a full wakanda outfit listen uh it'd be on and popping because i saw a lot of people really showing out on social media uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, with with how they were showing up to the movie theater. And I just, you know, I appreciate, you know, the creativity. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing it this weekend. And, um, you know, just and, and, and to Chike's point, you know, no, these people do go crazy. They went crazy over a, mo over a mermaid and, you know. Yeah. Like it. A mermaid. A mermaid. Mm -hmm. They 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 went crazy over over bringing in other other ethnicities in Star Wars. Crazy. You got you got the people from these movies not even wanting to be on social media because of all the bigotry and racist things that those people come at them with because they because they've been brought into a fake universe. Right. Can I can I chime in for a minute? Going back to Dave Chappelle, he actually made fun of this on his skit talking about House of Dragons on yes. Saturday Night Live. He yes. made fun of this very same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. With the bad wigs. <laughs> well, you know, they went through a lot making this movie. They had um to rework work the script after Chad would pass. They had to uh manage COVID-19 restrictions. And then, is her name Letitia, Letitia Wright? Um, yeah. Yeah, she fractured her shoulder on set. Um, and so, but they, they made it work. I can't wait for y'all to watch it because I can't wait to discuss it. No spoilers, alerts, but I'm telling you, that, that takes you like, the one thing is two, two hours and 40 minutes, you don't, you don't feel it. Usually two hours in the movie, I'm like, okay. But this one, you feel, I mean, I didn't want it to end. I don't want but to most, but most, most Marvel yeah. movies are long. Yeah. 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 Avengers was like three hours. Am I correct? Like, like uh -huh. three hours. Uh -huh. So if if you're into it, the time means nothing. If you're right. in, like, if that's mm -hmm. what you're into. The time means now. Certain movies, I don't say. I'm like, Lord Jesus, it ain't over with yet. <laughs> well, it was one point I thought the movie was about to end, and it didn't. <laughs> but it was good. It was really good. It was really good. Right, we're we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. Find out. Uh, so an eighth grade teacher and her husband, they're both teachers, they were fired from their jobs for their OnlyFans page. Right back after this.